Hey folks, one of the issues that's repeated time and time again in the comment sections when I'm reviewing a used graphics card is that of reliability. And to be fair, a lot of you do have a point. I've been fortunate so far with most of my purchases, with the majority of them being pretty much as new, apart from a little bit of dust. Apart from that, you'd never know they'd actually been used by somebody else. And to be honest, out of the four cards that I've received that have been dead on arrival, only one of them was bought used. In that long drawn out returns process, it kind of made me wish I had bought it online on eBay with PayPal, where the buyer protection is really quite brilliant. But what if you buy something that you already know doesn't work? Something unloved or hard used? Well, let me introduce you to the Zotac GTX 660Ti. At least I think it's a 660Ti anyway, under half a decade of dust gunk and what smells like a 40 a day habit. So I knew when I bought this card that there was a few issues with it. Someone had misflashed the card and corrupted the BIOS and chucked it on eBay. But when I threw it into the test rig, a few more issues started to appear. Upon booting up, the fans were spinning at two different speeds. No, this is not a precursor to the modern variable fan technology. One fan, the fastest one, worryingly enough, is hitting the heatsink and giving a nice tick, and the other one looks like it's constricted by so much gunk and hair that it's actually slowing itself down. So it's obvious that this card needs some TLC. So step one is going to be to reflash that BIOS. Now I have fixed a badly flashed AMD card in the past, and I'm going to be using the NVIDIA toolset, which follows the same sort of process. Thankfully, simply by using a bootable DOS drive and the NV flash tool, we was able to unbrick the 660Ti and flash on the correct BIOS, and this let us boot into Windows. However, it was not plain sailing in here, trying to run a 3D Mark stress test just highlighted the need for a total refurb, temperatures rocketing almost instantly and the clocks throttling back. Not to mention the noise being comically loud before blue screening. So out with the card and a complete disassemble. The first step is going to be separating the cooling system from the PCB. This is done by the usual method being held on by four sprung screws and unfastening them in a diagonal fashion. Doing this and the PCB popped off fairly easily, revealing the original thermal interface material. Now on lower end cars, the thermal paste generally lasts a little bit longer than their generational flagship counterparts, and this is due to lower heat, but seeing as the GPU in the 660Ti is actually a scaled back GK104, the same GPU as you'll find in a GTX 680 or a 770, rather than the smaller GK106 chip which is used in the non-TI GTX 660, it didn't come as too much of a shock to find that the original smear of thermal interface material had become more like dust than paste. I mean, it's not a good thing when there's more gunk in your graphics card's fans than on the GPU itself. But on the plus side being that there was so little thermal material left, it cleaned up really easily with just a few q-tips and some isopropyl alcohol and revealed a nice clean copper base of the heatsink and that lovely GK104 processor. This was the easy bit though and the rest of the heatsink required a full disassembly, with the Zotac shroud simply held on with four screws and the fans each held on with three screws. First up was the heatsink, and with everything stripped off, it looked like some grease and dust buildup had actually started to burn at some point during its life, but a good 30 minutes or so with a mix of compressed air, brushes and isopropyl alcohol cleaned it up quite nicely. Most stubborn airs were exposed to the isopropyl for a lot longer using a saturated cotton ball, but after a few minutes of this, even the toughest greasy marks could simply be cleaned up with a q-tip and some elbow grease. Once thoroughly clean, the heatsink was rinsed again in isopropyl alcohol, wrapped in an old towel and placed on a heater to dry out. The PCB was not free from dust and grime either, but a quick blast of compressed air seen off most of that mess and the rest and the more stubborn contaminants were cleaned up using a q-tip and isopropyl alcohol. The 660Ti does feature some additional chip cooling, but these small heatsink they simply pop off with two push screws so you can pop that off, clean them up and replace the thermal pads underneath. The shroud itself, being one body with no intricate details, was simply left to soak in warm water and then gently scrubbed down. Very quick and easy and once dried off completely the top shroud was detailed to bring a little bit of shine back. No performance benefits here at all, but it now looks as good as the day it was bought. The fans were by far the most fiddly with each fan requiring the use of a small nail scissors to cut out all the hair which had become tangled. Each of the fins were cleaned up simply using a q-tip and isopropyl alcohol to remove all the dust and grime. 
and once this was completed it was immediately noticeable, simply by spinning the fan with your finger, that there was a lot less resistance than before we started. So, quite happy that everything is nice and clean, it was time to screw everything back together, ensuring good fan clearance to the heatsink, to try and eliminate that tick tick noise that we heard earlier. And this process is a simple reverse of how the card was taken apart. With the heatsink reassembled, the fans were connected back onto the PCB, and a rice sized blob of non conductive thermal paste was added onto the GPU package itself. Flipping the card upside down, the screw holes were lined up and screwed back together in a diagonal pattern, completing the card's refurbishment. So we started off here with a bricked card with half a decade of grime baked on it, which overheated as soon as you started to run any sort of application that went to push some polygons. So what have we got now? Well, what we've got is a pretty sweet budget gaming graphics card that almost looks factory fresh. And what better game to run in the 660 Ti than a blast through Crisis 3? So we've installed the 660 Ti into the Core i5 test rig, which in its current configuration consists of the i5-4590 and 8GB of DDR3 RAM running Windows 10 Professional. With Crisis 3 running at 1920 by 1080 it was able to set it to the high preset with 1x SMAA enabled and 16x anisotropic filtering, and playing through the first few chapters we got an average frame rate in the mid 50s which was pretty good, with the average minimums hovering well above that 40fps mark. What was equally as impressive as the frame rates though was the temperatures, no longer are with throttling and blue screening at the first sign of a polygon, the 660 Ti did plateau around about 65 to 70 degrees with its fans rotating at an unobtrusive 2500 RPM according to the MSI afterburner logs. What's even more impressive is that simply by turning on VSync drops that temperature and fan speeds down even further, since the game often reaches frame rates above 60 FPS in less demanding areas. So that's one less card destined for the silicon scrap peep in the sky, and another tasty budget GPU for us to test out in more detail. So hopefully you'll have found this video at least entertaining, and we'll stick around to see how this revived GTX 660 Ti performs in a full suite of games soon. We might have dodged the bullet with this one, but it's always great when you're able to breathe some life into something that was simply been sold for parts, and it just highlights the importance of maintenance in older hardware. If your card is old in a harsh environment, or has got a sketchy history, it can't hurt to crack open your case and give it some TLC. And even if you're not into totally cleaning out everything, a simple change of thermal material can work wonders on an older card. But I'll leave it there for today folks, thanks for tuning in and consider clicking that subscribe button and using those thumbs if you haven't done so already, take care and I'll see you all in the comments section down below and in the next video.